Dunbarn Tristan Rogers is a rare talent who can boast of soap opera successes on three continents. He is currently sweeping the American women off their feet as the handsome Scorpio on ABC's General Hospital. And he's with me today to tell us a little bit about his personal formula for career success and fitness. Tristan, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for allowing me to be here. I have to apologize. I don't get a chance to uh, see the daytime dramas doesn't surprise me with the schedule you work. But everybody has been telling me that you are just the biggest heartthrob that there is right now. Well, I guess it depends on who you listen to. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about um, how you found out about getting the job on General Hospital and what it was like to come into a show that was so well established. Well, you know, I went through the normal rigors of any sort of person that <clears throat> gets onto a show. That is, I got an agent who then put me up for this role and I went along and did about four or five auditions and then was told report to work. Now in my particular case uh, it was very quick. Normally you go through uh, screen tests and it might uh, say the casting might take maybe oh say six or seven weeks before they make up their mind. Mm. Now in my particular case I only went in originally for two weeks. The role was only written for two weeks so they didn't bother to go through all the preliminary pre-casting. It wasn't until I actually got the role that then they decided that they wanted to expand it and I was put on a three-year contract. So it went from two weeks, actually it went from two weeks to 12 months to three years and who knows. <laughs> Big leaps and bounds. It's funny because you really had been established in Australia. Yeah. And then you left that career to come to America and begin again. What kind of feelings do you have as an artist when you it seems like you're starting all over again, or, or was it that way for you? Yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't an easy move. It was actually my wife's idea to come over here. It, it didn't really occur to me that I was in a rut back in Australia. I said, you, you get to a point where you're so close to everything, you can't see the forest for the trees. And it doesn't sort of occur to you that you're doing, you've been doing the same role for the last um, five years, and you just really haven't noticed it. And she said, look, there really isn't a lot of future here for you. You're always going to be playing this part. Now, either you can go somewhere else and start again, or you can resign yourself to doing what you're doing now. It took about 12 months for that to finally get to sink in. Mm -hmm. And then we said, all right, let's get out of here. Now, the transition of coming from Australia to America wasn't such a big one. I mean, there isn't a great deal of difference between Americans and Australians. They tend to look the same. They chew gum. Uh, you know. <laughs> But there certainly has been... They sound been, a little bit different. There certainly has been, uh, especially in the last, I'd say, two years, especially with the Australian film industry doing what it's done and making its mark on a market here in America that to, to be an Australian actor now becomes uh, an asset that may be uh, putting you over American actors. How does that feel? Because certainly you were in on part of that, uh, that shift. It is now. It wasn't when I first started. Uh, it's the same as any foreigner who goes to another country. You are an alien. You have a strange accent. You may not look strange, but you sound weird. Mm -hmm. And consequently, this immediately limits you in terms of the amount of work you can do. Well, I was told, you know, you won't get any, any work with that absurd accent. Now, you really did work to, to get rid of the accent, isn't that right? Uh, yeah. Trying to get a good, authentic American accent. Good American accent, yeah. And now, here you are. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> here you are now, and uh, what I would like you to do right now is to describe to me Scorpio, because I've, I've never seen him, so if you can give me just one sentence where I can really get an idea of what he's like. Confused. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's undergone a lot of changes in the last two years. When he first came into the show, he was uh, this sort of fairly one-dimensional, uh, witty, humorous, charming, dangerous, etc., etc. Then after that, they decided to mess with him a little bit. They had to sort of stretch him to give him more interest. I mean, you can't run around being, um, you know, Superman all the time. I mean, it gets a little bit boring. So then they started to sort of, they test you. You're, you're, you're constantly being tested in daytime television. You come in as one thing, then they, they slip all sorts of other things to you to find mm -hmm. out what your range is and to see what your limitations are. If you can handle it, they keep on giving you more and more and more and more. Or, consequently, if you can't handle it, they say, right, this is as far as we can go with this character. Don't, you know, develop what we, we understand about him. Well, they kept on doing that with me. 
And I kept on sort of making as much as I could out of it. And I guess I must have been doing something right because I'm still there. I think the bottom line on all of that is that if you do have talent as an actor and if you can bring across all kinds of different colors in a personality, that then you really succeed. Um, so I think it's to your credit that you can make those adjustments and, 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 and have the audience grow to like you more and more. I now, I hope that they don't do this to you, because I know they used to do what? this, and that you really love the character, and then he turns out to be really nasty, and An he idiot. starts treating everybody badly. Uh, I hope they don't do that to you. Well, that's a hard <laughs> one. Uh, it's a hard one because they're, you're undergoing constant change in there all the time. And uh, this particular year has been a difficult one because I used to get really screwed up looking at the lines and so forth. And I'd say, look, they're messing with my character again, you know. And then you go right off the planet and flip out. Well, there comes a point where you say, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you are powerless to change things anyway. You can change limited things. You can't change the basic subtext of a storyline. Mm -hmm. So what you've got to do is deal with it. Uh, as an actor and also mentally. Once you've come to grips with the whole thing mentally, the rest of it falls into place and it's just, well, you know, manana. Well, I think that it's fantastic that uh, daytime drama can provide for so many people an outlet where it really makes them feel better and it makes them feel good to watch the continuing stories. And I want to thank you for joining us today. You're really quite a lovely man. Thank oh, you thank so you. much. Thank you so much. And my